Ah, yes, the infamous U-turn. Throttle, clutch, rear brake. Head and eyes, handlebars. Look in the direction that you want to go. It all seems so simple, right? Head and eyes, handlebars, look in the direction you want to go. Throttle, clutch, rear brake. So why are so many of us having a problem with this? That's what we're going to talk about today. Preloaders. Did I tell you guys that I love you? Have I mentioned that? All right, check out this preloader. His name's Chris. I currently rank myself a five on slow speed maneuvers. All right, today, grab the front brake. So I'm doing my push-ups. Remember, preload, keep it loaded, cover the rear brake. Thanks. Outstanding, Chris. I mean, outstanding. So once again, guys, I'm going to say to you, how disciplined of a preloader are you? If, if you're out there practicing or you're just simply riding and you're riding in slow speed maneuvers and you grab that front brake out of bad habit, Send me a video of you doing 10 push-ups next to your motorcycle, all right? Show me how disciplined of a preloader you are, okay? And remember, guys, it's not about the push-ups, okay? So I don't care if the push-ups don't look as good as Chris's push-ups looked. I don't care if your butt is in the air. I don't care if you can't go all the way down. I don't care if you don't come all the way up. I don't care if you can't do 10 push-ups consecutively. If you do two and you got to rest for 10 minutes and do another two until you get to 10, it's not about the push-ups, it's about what the push-ups represent. Okay, guys? Important that you understand that. All right, so that's always a good welcome, and in my opinion, always a great way to start one of my videos. All right, so <laughs> I love it. I just love it. Have I told you guys I love you? All right. Okay, so always good to have you guys here with me. You know how proud I am of you guys and how you guys are the prime example. All right? You are setting an example. And for your friends that aren't preloaders yet, I say yet because I have hope that they're gonna watch you ride and go, what the hell happened to this guy? He didn't used to ride like this. Ah, I wanna ride like that. Some people have too much pride, they don't wanna say something. You know, I'm good, I'm good, I'm good. I've gotten some comments like that, I'm good. If you duck walk in your motorcycle and you still feel uneasy about making turns and U-turns and anything like that, no, you're not good. And you shouldn't be, you shouldn't accept that you're good, okay? All right, I'm doing a lot of talking, but I have to always remember, there are people watching this now that are not preloaders. Okay. If you want to know what a preloader is, all you have to do is go to the description section. There's a definition in there for what preloaders are, for what preload means, and a bunch of other information that's relevant to this channel. And that includes um, the cone course dimensions that we do out here, the name of the exercises that we do, um, information on how to send donations to this channel to help support it, information on how to send something to me if you want me to have something. There's information on merchandise. Um, there's information on practice sessions. So guys, check that description section. It's going to help you out. Trust me. It's really going to help you out. Okay. And if you guys ask me any questions and the information is in the description section, I'm just going to send you a message saying, check the description section. Okay. All right. So again, for all you non preloaders, okay, you newcomers to the channel, maybe you just stumbled upon the channel. How are you? Welcome to the channel. My name's Robert. I'm a retired NYPD highway patrol motorcycle lieutenant. I did a wonderful 22 year career with the NYPD. 15 of those years were spent in the motorcycle unit.
name of this channel is called Robert Simmons Paying It Forward. And I created this channel for two reasons. The first reason, I wanted to share my knowledge, experience, and training that I received from the NYPD Highway Patrol Motorcycle Unit with you guys, with a special focus on slow speed motorcycle operation, because that's the skill that's required to keep this motorcycle upright 15 miles per hour or less without having your feet out, okay? That's reason number one. The second reason is I wanna help you be the boss of your motorcycle. Right, let, me, now let me come closer. I want you to see this. I wanna help you be the boss of your motorcycle, all right? And there's preload. You don't know what it means? Go to the description section, okay? And being the boss of your motorcycle simply means I want you to feel confident riding this motorcycle. So let me, let me be clear about that too. This channel is all about raising your confidence level, okay? Was I a motorcycle lieutenant? Yes. Do we have a, uh, a certain level of training, motorcycle officers that is? Do we get a special level of training and that's why we ride the way we do? Yes, absolutely. Do all motorcycle riders ride? Uh, are they all the best? Do they all, can they all compete in rodeos? No. The point is, you have to practice, okay? This is a perishable skill. You have to keep practicing it, okay? I say this to you because I don't want you to think that you have to ride like that in order to be the boss of your motorcycle. Being the boss just means you have confidence. Being the boss just simply means you have confidence to make right turns and left turns and U-turns, all right? And that's what we're gonna be talking about today. So I wanna help you guys out with that. And lastly, I hold practice sessions in this parking lot, usually on a weekly basis and that's free of charge to my subscribers. I'm in Pula, Georgia. And if you guys are interested, as I stated earlier, if you're interested in coming out here and practicing with us, go to the description section, go down to where it says practice sessions and follow the instructions, okay? That simple. Okay, speaking of merchandise, most of you guys know, but those of you that don't, all of the merchandise that's available to you guys, including what I'm wearing here, my wife designed all of this. Painstakingly working because the program is not the best that's used to design this. And just so you guys know, we don't have any control over the, the sizes that are available, anything like that. It's just submitted to Teespring and then whatever they have, that's what's available to you guys. Okay. But I want to show you, she did some new stuff. She, I, I told her, honey, that's enough. <laughs> Stop. But she's so creative. She keeps coming out with, with new stuff because she's trying to make sure she covers everybody that might want something. So check this out. Okay, honey, sweetie, I love you. Stop. That's enough. <laughs> All right? That's enough. But I really appreciate her, man. She's just, what a phenomenal woman. All right? Okay, guys. Uh, listen, I know there's anything you guys could be doing with your time, and the fact that you choose to spend a little bit of it with me, I appreciate that. Okay? For those of you that would like to help support my channel, please, you can send your donations via Zelle or Venmo to the address on the upper right-hand corner of your screen. You can also do it via PayPal, all right? There's a link that you can click on in the description section for that. So that kind of makes it a little bit easier. Everybody doesn't know what uh, Zelle is or Venmo, and I get it. Okay, so PayPal is available for you guys. And if there's anything else you guys would like to send me, all right, you can send it to this address right here. All right, that's also linked in the description section. Ah, the description section again. <laughs> all right, guys, so for those of you that have been with me, for the whole, what, how long have I been doing this? Like four and a half months or whatever? You've heard me talk about the U-turn. You've seen me make a video about the U-turn. In fact, I've made more than one video about the U-turn. However, I don't give a damn how many videos I have to make about this. As long as there's people out there that still have questions and maybe they didn't pick up on something that I did in one of the other videos, we'll go over it again. No big deal, right? Okay, so what do we start with? Like, where do we start? Where do we start uh, discussing this? Okay? All right. So I guess what, I, what, I'm, what I'm assuming is the problem with the U-turn, as I see it, is a number of things. And I'm not even talking about technique, about throttle, clutch, rear brake, head and eyes. Those things are automatic, right? Um, but I'm more so talking about your worries and your fears. So what are you worried about? 
What are your fears? So let's talk about that. And let's answer that. Is your fear to lean the motorcycle? Now, clearly, that's a lot of people's fears. Now, if you are fearful of dropping the motorcycle, then that means your other fear, because there has to be a fear attached to that, you're not, you're not scared of leaning, you're scared of the result of what might happen if you, if you lean, which is, I'm, a, I'm assuming, either one of two things. Dropping your motorcycle and damaging it, or dropping your motorcycle and being injured. So let's talk about that. Are you afraid of being injured? Remember, we're on a cone course. We're going about, at the most, 10 miles per hour in the, in the exercise that we're doing. Because remember, this is slow speed motorcycle operation. Speed is not your friend out here. So you're going slow. So if your motorcycle falls, it's a drop. It's not a crash. It's just a drop. It's just like you dropping it in your garage. Okay? Now, what I will say to you is, if you have this type of motorcycle, where you have engine guards and you have saddlebag guards, if your motorcycle drops while you're on it, uh, of course, I'm going to say trust and believe. <laughs> All right. So I'm not talking about trust and believe because clearly if you feel your motorcycle starting to fall, what are you supposed to do? You're already preloaded, right? And you're keeping it loaded. So there's already power available, right? All you have to do is open up your clutch hand. Okay. You have to make sure that you have enough clutch out as well. Now, if you're in the friction zone, which you clearly are in everything we're doing, not exercise number three, because we all know exercise number three, the motorcycle is not moving. But if you're in the friction zone, now you already have power going to the rear wheel. But that's why I always say you have to have sufficient power going to the rear wheel. Remember, the slower that you're going, the more important it is that you have power going to this rear wheel, because it's the only thing keeping the motorcycle up. Gravity is calling. Okay? So, throttle, clutch. In the sweet spot. Remember, exercise number three, I say put the clutch right before the sweet spot. No, no, no. Now you're in the sweet spot. You're in the friction zone. Power is going there. And then that rear brake, so important. So use that rear brake. Now, I have told you guys, bring the, bring the clutch to a certain spot where you have enough power going to the rear wheel. And wherever the clutch is, keep it there. Wherever your throttle is, keep it there. And I told you guys to just drag the rear brake going throughout the turn. Now, guys, remember, this is why we practice, because if I tell you to do something like that, you still have to practice it because the amount of everything that you do is relevant. Too much brake is a problem because if you brake too much, now that's counterproductive to you providing power to the rear wheel. Remember, if you don't have enough power going to your rear wheel, your motorcycle is going to drop. That can either mean your clutch is in too much or you have your clutch out enough, but your brake is, you're, you're applying too much brake, okay? So this is why we have to practice these things. Right? So when I tell you use the rear brake, keep your clutch and your throttle where it is, yes, I want you to do that because I want to tackle one thing at a time. Now, if you get that and that's easy for you and that works for you, great. But what I'd really like you to do is once you get the hang of that, now I want you to start incorporating the clutch too, okay? You don't have to do too much manipulating of the clutch, but I still want you to be able to master the friction zone. And to do that, you have to have good clutch control, okay? So it's, it's a lot of different variables, um, but that's why I say let's do the easiest one first, and then we can, because again, what's the goal of this channel? What's the number one goal? To raise your confidence level. So if a bunch of stuff is being thrown at you, and it, it is confusing you, and you're not getting it, and if you're confused and you get on this machine, you're already intimidated by it, and then you add on confusion, and then you just go out and try something, you're, it's like sabotage. You know, the odds are against you being successful. And my, my goal is to make this as simple as possible for you. Okay? All right. So, let's walk this first. So, like anything else in life, if you practice and you practice and you practice, you're going to react when something doesn't go as planned. You're going to react to it the way you always react to it during practice because it's muscle memory now. All right? So, Head and eyes, handlebars. Turn your handlebars. That's another thing, too. When you turn your handlebars, keep them turned, all right? Everything you, well, not everything, but the things that you're doing in here, I need them to be consistent. So if you turn your head and your eyes and you look where you want to go, consistently keep looking in that direction until your motorcycle is facing in that direction, okay? If you have your throttle in the friction zone, you're preloaded, you're keeping it loaded. The keeping it loaded is you being consistent. 
you're going to be consistent in that, all right? So when you make that U-turn, it's nice and smooth. Now, sometimes you see people make a U-turn and the motorcycle is kind of like dipping and, di you know, it's just jumping like this. That's fine because you're learning, you know? After you start practicing that more, it's going to get smoother and smoother, okay? But this is the reason why I say when you preload it, I'd rather your throttle be higher than lower so that if anything happens, you should still be okay, okay? So back to consistencies. Your head and eyes, consistent. Your handlebars being turned, consistent. It does you no good if you're making the U-turn and you, you're straightening out the handlebars while you're doing it because all you're doing is losing space, all right? Okay, and lean the motorcycle. Remember, trust and believe that as long as there's power going to the rear wheels, your motorcycle's not gonna fall. So the beauty about this is we're not talking about dragging your floorboards, okay? We're not talking about that. All you have to do is slightly lean your motorcycle and this U-turn is nothing. Slightly lean it. The, and we're also not talking about a full lock on your handlebars. Not necessary. If your speed is correct, your handlebars don't have to be locked all the way. Let me show you. All right, right here, I'm going nine miles an hour, head and eyes. Not a full lock. Not leaning a lot, just slightly. Nine miles an hour, head and eyes, handlebars. All right, I'm on that rear brake. Not leaning a lot, not a full lock. Okay, here's a full lock. Nine miles an hour, head and eyes. So yeah, it's gonna be a tighter turn. All right. Now here's a full lock with more of a lean. Nine miles an hour, head and eyes. So you see the differences. But my point is, nine miles an hour, I don't have to lean a lot. See, seven miles an hour, I don't have to lean a lot. I don't have to lock the handlebars to make that U-turn. Now, what I've also noticed is there are people that pull into this U-turn and they're probably going about uh, 14, 15 miles per hour and they make the U-turn and they have a nice lean, but they're going fast. So they make the U-turn, but remember, the goal here is to challenge yourself. I want you to be the boss of your motorcycle. If you make that U-turn and pick up speed to make it, you're allowing the motorcycle to take over a little bit. And we don't want that. We want you to be the boss. We want you to be in 100% control. So I'm gonna show you what, you what I'm talking about as far as people kind of swooping through it. Right, and, and I know it feels good to them, but woo, I made it. go through there like that scrape the boards and man it feels so good man I scraped my boards today listen if you see guys riding the dragon you hear boards scraping all the time it's not a big accomplishment to, sc to scrape your boards when you're riding at speed because the motorcycle is kind of taking care of most of that remember at slow speeds that's where bosses are made so when you scrape your boards out here not that I'm telling you guys that's the goal out here but my point is that's something to be proud of because that's when you know your skill level, is that's all on you if you're scraping out here. So when I made those turns right there, I was going about 12 to 13 miles per hour. So now I have to lean the motorcycle more in order to make this turn and that's gonna make the board scrape. So the good news about that is, clearly they're not scared of leaning the motorcycle going about 12 or 13 miles per hour. So now all we gotta do is slow down a little bit more. Just keep the power consistent, not gonna have any problems. So this is nine miles an hour. See, I don't have to scrape the boards or anything. I don't have to do a full lock and I'm fine. I'm... And look at my brake lights. I'm on the brakes the whole time, the whole time. Now I come off the brake. So 
So while I'm in the friction zone, as soon as I'm pulling up, I'm on that rear brake. Hey, tonight, handlebars. Right here, I'm off my brake. Because I'm already done with the turn. And as I always like to show you guys, if you have power going to the rear wheel, this is seven miles per hour. Six miles per hour. Seven, six, seven, six. As long as I have power going to my rear wheel, doesn't matter. Sufficient power, sufficient power. So important. Okay, so now that we covered the U-turn stuff here, 27 feet, let's go to another location and apply everything that we do here, there. Okay, so let's look at where my motorcycle is. Now, this is the road that leads to the parking lot where we do our practice sessions. And when we do follow the leader, this is one of the things that I always come and I do. I ride up here and I stop, and I make sure everybody stops because the rules that follow the leader are Whatever I do, you do. So if I stop, you stop. And then, what do, we do, what do I do after that? I make a U-turn, right? So, the more you practice this, the more you're going to be able to visualize something, visualize an area and know I can make a U-turn there. You're going to be able to know it. Just like before you learned how to drive, spots looked so tight. And then once you started to learn and you practiced and you got better, now... You can eyeball a spot, and you know already I can fit my car right through it. You can fly right through it. You'll still see some people going all slow, and I'm looking at them like, you can fit a tractor trailer through there. Come on. That just means they need to practice more. Their confidence level is too low. Okay? All right. Now, in this U-turn, I see people, even though I'm, my motorcycle is right here, I see people bring their motorcycles all the way to the outside of this lane so that they can make this U-turn because they're giving themselves more space. So clearly they should be out because the rules are, you do what I do. So if I didn't go out, you don't go out. Or there are people that start here and they end up in the grass over here. So you know what? Let's measure this. And yes, guys, this fits in my saddlebag too. This is by uh, Lufkin. I got it from Home Depot. No, Lufkin's not sponsoring me. All right, so let's, let's measure this. If I have to eyeball this, I'm going to say that this is less than 27 feet. But let's see. So I'm going to do it from where my, my front tire is. And I'm just going to go straight across. Now, I'm going to tell you right now, that's 18 feet right there. But remember, we're not out here to do 18 foot U-turns. Let's keep going. Okay, I was wrong. That's 30 feet, all right? So now we're wider than anything we're doing on the practice course. We're wider by three feet. So again, if you know that you can make a U-turn in three parking spaces, there's no reason, no reason at all why you should be coming out to the far side to make a left turn. And I want you to think about that. Would you do that with your car? No. If you're, if you're driving a tractor trailer, you'd do that because you have something behind you. Or if you're pulling a trailer. But for a motorcycle that turns better than a car, a tractor trailer, or anything like that, I want you to think about that. If in your brain, you're saying to yourself, I'm getting ready to make this turn. Let me go out really wide to do it. That right there should be telling you, man, I got to go out and practice because this is a motorcycle, right? Okay. All right. So I'm going to make this U-turn. And that's why recently I started having people uh, in exercise number six, I started having them make U-turns from a stop because that's simulating this. All right. Remember from a stop. Now it's not the same as right turns, left turns from a stop, but it's very similar. Okay. But the steps are the same. Let's go through the steps. Pretend the motorcycle's running because obviously that has to happen. Step number one, I'm going to do them while I'm sitting on the motorcycle. Make sure the motorcycle's in first gear. So important. Step number two, cover the rear brake. Step number three, preload and keep it loaded. 
Step number four, clutch, right before the sweet spot. Step number five, slowly release the clutch into the friction zone. Step number six, head and eyes, look in the direction that you wanna go. Step number seven, slowly release the clutch into the friction zone. And as soon as you feel a motorcycle starting to move, pick up your left foot. Now I should also say, as soon as you pick up your left foot, remember, you're on that rear brake for the entirety of that U-turn, right? Right away to make sure you're not going too fast, make sure you're good, okay? If you feel like, uh-oh, well, what do you do? Let off the rear brake a little bit because you're already preloaded, you're already in the friction zone, so you're good. And step number eight, turn your handlebars, right? Let's do it. I'm in first gear, I'm covering the rear brake. Preload, keep it loaded. Clutch right before the sweet spot. Head and eyes, look where I wanna go. Slowly release the clutch into the friction zone. As Soon as the motorcycle starts to move, I'm gonna pick up my left foot. I'm on that rear brake right away. Turn my handlebars. Lead the motorcycle. Now, I should also mention, I'd be remiss if I didn't mention this. This is also simulating if you're in a if you're on a roadway where there's two lanes and then there's a turnoff lane and now you have to stop and wait. Now I've seen people in that turnoff lane waiting to make a U-turn so they're on the outside of the lane, right? You have an island here and they're on, they're on this part of the lane. And I want you to think about that again. That's another example of somebody that, doesn't, that lacks the confidence in making that U-turn. They wanna give themselves as much space as possible. So they've totally forgotten about the safety aspect of, of course, it's going to be safer to be on the inside of that lane near the island versus on the outside of the lane where cars are flying past you. All it takes is somebody to be on their cell phone or, or whatever, anything could happen, and you're hit, right? Matter of fact, instead of talking to you guys about it, let me show you.
All right, let's watch. Let's watch this guy making this U-turn. Right. I'm good. Yeah. I'm making a YouTube video. Now you're gonna be on it. Uh, <laughs> Where are you going, Holly Davidson? Yeah. Yeah, I'm gonna be over there in a second. Uh, how's your How's your slow speed riding? Slow speed riding. How is it? I'm like, I think it's yes. good. Yes. One to ten. One to ten. What would you give yourself? How my skills are? Yeah. Oh, I'd give myself a two. A ten? A two. Oh, a two. All right, let me let me give this to you real quick. I'm coming over there anyway. You live in the area? I live in uh, Little Whistle. All right, well, there's people that come from all over to come practice with me, so we'll talk. That bike looks good, man. Thank you, sir. Very nice looking limited. Thank you. Thank you. I'll see you over. All right, brother. All right, preloaders. Now this guy didn't ask to be in my video, but he just happened to do something that we're talking about. So I ask you preloaders, what did he do wrong? What could he have done better? Can you spot it? Let's take another look at it. Now aside from him having his head buried, you can see right here as he's taken off, he's not covering the rear brake as he first starts to move, and he's still not on the rear brake, so he's going too fast. His head and his eyes are not turned, and as a result, he's well over the line. Now you see, when he made that U-turn, he didn't have his head and his eyes turned, his head is buried, and because of that, he actually went onto the shoulder to make that U-turn. Now, I could get my wheel out to measure it, but really not necessary yeah I'm good really not necessary I know that's way more than three parking spaces I'm telling you you gotta love Savannah Georgia the people are so nice I've already had like five people ask me if I'm okay maybe I shouldn't have put the hazard lights on but anyway but anyway this is what I'm talking about uh, Indian is doing their demo rides okay I'm gonna go over there and give out some cards but this is the road I'm talking about you got two lanes over here and you have a turning lane. So he was on the inside of the turning lane. That's where you want to be. This is so much space. So much space. But we don't want to just think about the right lane because what if the right lane is under construction? And now you have to make this U-turn from this lane to this lane. There's still plenty of space, right? All right, so let's do it. Okay, so as I'm approaching the turn, I'm downshifting from second gear to first gear. I'm on the front brake, transitioning to the rear brake, and I'm gonna come to a stop. All of the rules are the same here, all right? Now, as I tell you guys to count them, when you practice this enough, you're not gonna have to count them because it's just gonna be second nature. Make sure I'm in first gear, cover the rear brake, preload and keep it loaded, clutch right before the sweet spot, head and eyes look where I wanna go, um, slowly reach the, release the clutch into the friction zone, and as soon as the motorcycle starts to move, pick up my left foot, turn my handlebars, and the rest takes care of itself. And as soon as the motorcycle starts to move, I'm gonna pick up my left foot, turn the handlebars. Nice and easy. All right guys, so I came across here to uh, Indian. I told you guys that they're having their demo ride today. I was thinking about riding a couple of them. You know, I, I, I'll ride any motorcycle. It's kind of cloudy out here. I don't know if it's going to rain or not. But anyway, as I was over here, I was approached by a preloader. All right, so we're going to talk to her. What's your name, ma'am? Marley. Marley. Marley, where are you from? I'm from, I was born in Dallas, Texas, but raised in Jacksonville. Okay, and do you live here now? I live in Rinkin. Rinkin. Oh, and she's local. All right, how long have you been riding a motorcycle? Four months. And what are you riding? I'm riding a 2021 Indian Scout Bobber. Okay. Scale of one to ten, ten being the best. How would you rate your slow speed motorcycle operating skills? Six. Six? Wow. Guys, you heard her right now. I'm an eight. So okay, maybe if five. She, oh hold on, hold on. <laughs> five? Five. Okay, so we're gonna have tell me your name again? Marley. 
Molly. So we definitely have to get Molly out to a practice session. One, one thing I will tell you, Molly, about the practice session, it's extremely humbling. There are a lot of people that will come out there and say five and then wind up being something less, and that's fine. It's not a competition. Okay. Um, is your motorcycle here today? Yes, it's parked over there. Ah, okay. And you're riding in the demos? Yes. All right. Are we going to get you to come out to the practice sessions? Absolutely. I've been wanting to for a while. I just have never really... Are you, do you work on the weekends? No, I do not. Okay. Now, you told me you had a, a, a leg injury or something like that? Um, I was in a head-on collision in uh -huh. 2017, and I uh, had an open fracture. My right heel was shattered. Uh -huh. My left tibia and fibula. I was in a wheelchair for three months. Wow. My was that in a car or a motorcycle? Uh, Truck. Okay, okay, okay. I, my uh, ulna, I, my back L1 vertebrae was crushed. Uh, wow, was wow. Here, yeah. So, and what I was explaining to Marley, mm -hmm. what I was explaining to Marley is, this is even more of a reason to get proficient in slow speed motorcycle operations so that you're not putting your landing gear out, you're not putting your feet down, you already had an, uh, an old injury, it's a heavy motorcycle. You know how much your motorcycle weighs? Uh, about 550. Yeah, it's a lot of weight. It's probably three times her weight. So we don't want to do that, right? We don't want to use our feet, okay? And that goes for us as we get older. You know, any, a lot of stuff can happen. You know, I got bad hips, so I'm not trying to put my feet down unnecessarily. So, okay, it was very, very nice to meet you. I look forward to seeing you out there on the practice course. Absolutely. Now, we got two other people here, too. <laughs> they didn't tell me that they, they want to be on YouTube, and I can always edit it out if they don't. Tina and Tom. And that's fine. She gave up your names, Tina and Tom. <laughs> yeah. And now, Tina did the, Tina, you did the uh, MSF course with Marley. Yes. Okay. How, how did you do, by the way? Um, I graduated. Oh, I did the writing course with the highest score. I only got one point deducted. Outstanding. Outstanding. I'm and how about you? Proud you should be. And how about you? I passed. Okay. There we go. <laughs> she did okay. Awesome. Don't let her. She did awesome. Do you live locally? Rinkin. So, uh, all right. I want you to tell my subscribers why you are not subscribed. Why are you not 24,501? Because <laughs> I'm not on YouTube. Okay, you need to get on YouTube, and I'm a, the only reason I'm telling you that is because there's a there's so much info. Let me ask you this first: on a scale of one to ten, how would you rate your slow speed motorcycle operating skill? Slow speed. Uh, how about a three? Okay, this is I'm why you need to watch. Going fast. Yeah. All right, you heard what she said, guys. She's better at going fast. What does my shirt say? Be the boss of your motorcycle. When you're going fast, who's the boss? The motorcycle is. Because she could jump off the motorcycle. If it's cruise control, it does, it'll stay, it'll go by itself. But 15 miles per hour or less, that's when your skill is necessary to keep this motorcycle upright. So I'm going to ask you again. <laughs> well, I'm not going to ask you again. I'm going to tell you, please, get on YouTube. And you guys all know it's not about the subscribers to me. It's never been about that. It's about getting in as many motorcycle riders as possible. You know you're part of the 98%, right? 98% of the motorcycle riding community are not proficient in actually riding this motorcycle. They just, they, just want, they just want to figure it out. Once they get to speed, they feel like they're good. As soon as they slow down, they feel that uneasy, unsure feeling. That's the goal of my channel, to raise confidence levels so that you won't even think twice about making a right turn, a left turn. Is this enough space for you to make a U-turn just on the black? Well, see, and, the, and here's, here's the important thing, too. The purpose of this channel is not to get you to make 18-foot U-turns and drag your floorboards. That is not the... Because some people never want to do that. And that means they might think, I can never be the boss. Not the case. Like every job, there's bosses at all levels. There's CEOs, there's bosses that can fire you, there's bosses that can't. So you can still be a boss, just not a, just a low-level boss, right? So... If you can make a U-turn in 27 feet, which is kind of th three parking spaces, that's what I do on my thing for the most part. So we have to do 24 feet. Yeah, exactly. So, so that's why I make it 27 feet, because most U-turns out there in the real world are not going to be 18 feet anyway. If you could do it, great. If you don't know how to do it and you never want to aspire to do that, that's fine. But you shouldn't be one of these people that I'm just going to go around the whole block because I'm avoiding the U-turn. Or you duck walking the motorcycle. Mm -mm, we don't want to do that. All right. So it's, I, I'm definitely I'm going to give you a card. All right, we're going to talk to this young man right here, too. What's your name again? Tom. Tom, what do you ride? What do I ride? Yeah. A road glide. A road glide. How long have you been riding a motorcycle? Uh, I'd say probably about eight or nine years. Okay. And on a scale of one to ten, how would you rate your slow-speed motorcycle operating skills? I would 
probably a three okay to a four now that i've got new tires it's like a whole new bike so i can ah. i feel a lot more confident are you local yes okay <laughs> so we got two people i got to give cards to because I, I let me tell you something i get so many emails comments in the comment section uh facebook uh, people saying oh my god i wish i was close to you and i got people right in my backyard that are not coming out here so I'm gonna give you guys a card. Nice to meet you both. What do you ride, by the way? Same, same. same thing. Indian Scout Bobber. And you guys getting ready to go? Yes. All right. All right. So guys, I wanted to share this with you too. So these cones that I use, if you guys recall, when I first started doing this out here, I bought some cones from Amazon, and if it was just a slight breeze, all the time it takes me to set these cones up, the wind was blowing the cones across the parking lot. So I went, I went online and I started searching for cones that I didn't want those really large cones because obviously, you know, that's, it's a lot more to transport those things. And not only that, I don't want something that's going to um, be rubbing up against people's motorcycles. You know, people bring nice motorcycles out here and um, something that's more, even more intimidating. You know, it's, this is not what this is about. Again, this is not a rodeo I'm doing out here. I'm just trying to raise people's confidence levels to help them be the boss of their motorcycles. But I needed something substantial enough that the wind wouldn't blow away, and if a 900-pound motorcycle ran over it, wouldn't destroy it. Voila. Here's what I got. These cones are six inches. When I tell you these cones are tough, or oh, they've been run over multiple times. Matter of fact, that's why I always tell people, my cones don't mind being run over. They just don't like being stared at. Okay? So, I got these from a company called LVL10 Sports. Um, that's Larry Victor Larry 10 Sports. And... Um, I, just phenomenal. Matter of fact, when I'm out here with my blower blowing out some of the debris, they don't even move. Now, of course, if I put my cone right on it, it'll move it because the blow is powerful. But just a breezy day or anything like that, not a problem at all. Tough as nails. And for you content creators, you know, there's a lot of people out there on YouTube that do motorcycle instruction videos, and they'll use those little hockey puck type looking uh, cones. Those might be good for you if you're practicing, but if you're putting, a, if you're going to put it on video. We can't see them, so it kind of we kind of we kind of get lost in what you're trying to show us. So um, I've already mentioned these cones to uh, a couple of YouTubers, and they've uh, purchased them. And they because they photo they show up on video beautifully, right? They're nice and bright. So that's another thing too; they don't fade in the sun. Um, and you can also get stickers that come with them. I don't know how relevant that'll be to you guys because this company really created these for sports. And when I when I contacted them, I let them know. These are actually perfect for what I'm doing. So if you guys are interested in these, um, you saw how they fit in my saddlebag. And if you have a tour pack, it's even better. Um, but if you're interested in these, I'm going to put a link in the description section for them. And the good news is if you make the purchase prior to uh, May 5th, there's a 15% uh, discount. All right. There's a coupon code on there. 15%. That's not like a, that's not a small discount. 15% is pretty substantial. So, all right, guys, check them out. Remember, I'm not going to recommend them to you unless I think they're beneficial and they're good. And these are good. All right, so I just want to show you guys. They fit nice and easy in the saddlebag. Now, I can actually get more in here than this. This is 16 cones. And I only need 15 cones to do uh, my U-turn. Um, but I put one extra in here. So and that, clearly, I can still put some more stuff in here, whether it be more cones. I can take this and stick it in there, and then I have all that space right here. Or, you know, space them out, however you want to put them in here. But the point is, they're not so small, I'm sorry, they're not so big that you can't put them in your saddlebags um, easily. And that's another big plus for these cones. All right, guys, so there's a couple of things I want you to keep in mind. Firstly, if this was easy, everyone would know how to do it, okay? Secondly, and it kind of, uh, <laughs> it kind of goes opposite of what I just said. But the fact of the matter is, everything is easy or easier when you know how to do it. And that's why we're practicing, okay? Practice, the more you practice, it's going to help you overcome uncertainty, fear, doubt. And the reason it's going to do that is because the opposite of all of that stuff is confidence. And the more your confidence is raised the less those other things are going to affect you. So just keep at it. Don't get discouraged, right? Don't get down on yourself. Don't beat yourself up. You know, it will come. I guarantee it. But you have to keep practicing and you have to practice, practice, practice. Okay. So with that being said, 
I'm gonna end this video. It's probably not gonna be the last video I make on you on U-turns, you know. Um, if I see, when I go back and watch this, if I see that there's something that I left out or didn't leave out, but maybe I can word it different or come up with another um, scenario or something to compare it to, I'm always looking for things and ways to help people get it. And that's why I, I encourage you guys to watch other videos as well. I appreciate my subscribers. I appreciate people that watch my channel. Um, and I know I'm not worried about this. You know, I never got into this for subscribers. I'm not worried about you going someplace else and never coming back. I'm just not worried about that. But it's always good to immerse yourself in whatever you're trying to accomplish. All right. So whatever that may be in life, if it's something that you're trying, a skill you're trying to attain or some knowledge, immerse yourself in it. And that's all you need to do here. Immerse yourself in this as far as your knowledge and as far as practice. You have to put some muscle memory to this stuff as well. OK. All right, guys. So I will say it again. Don't beat yourselves up. OK. You'll get it. You'll get it. All right. And I appreciate the fact that if you do get annoyed by this, I, I do appreciate that. I don't want you to think I don't. I, I pretty much notice a lot of things. And if you're trying to do something and you can't get it and it bothers you, that means that you're passionate about it, you care about it, and nine times out of ten, you're going to get it eventually. All right? So don't give up on yourself because I'm not going to give up on you. And then you got the other riders that they're never going to go through that because they're not even going to try. They're not going to practice. So you're a preloader. Okay? So remember, regular rider, preloader. All right? Okay. I always tell you this is not a competition. Nothing that we do is a competition. This doesn't make it a competition either. These are just facts. This person doesn't really care about how they ride. You want to get better. You want to be the best that you can be. You want to be a well-rounded motorcycle rider. And a well-rounded motorcycle rider is a safer motorcycle rider. And they're going to enjoy riding this motorcycle that much more. And here's the other thing I want to share with you guys. The best motorcycle riders in the world still drop their motorcycles. I'm going to say that again. The best motorcycle riders in the world still drop their motorcycles. And I'm saying this to you because if your goal is to attain skills and never drop your motorcycle, I mean, I really don't know what to tell you, you know. Now, if you're tentatively practicing, right, and because you don't want to practice scared. That's just a distraction. Now, I'm not saying you're not going to feel fear because that's a, it, it is what it is, especially when the motorcycle starts to lean. If you're not accustomed to that yet, yeah, it's going to feel a certain sort of way. But that's why you practice, okay? I, can, I really can't say that enough. If you really want to get over these things, there's no if ands, or buts about it. There's no two ways about it. You just have to practice. Remember, repetition equals retention. You just keep doing it over and over until it feels normal. Remember, what we're doing is we're taking your instinct, and we want to replace your instinct with technique. Okay? And the only way you're going to do that is to practice. Okay? Okay, guys. Enough said about all of that. Um, guys, spend more time being thankful for the things that you have and less time complaining about the things that you don't. As always, I want to give a shout out to my brothers and sisters in blue. Please, guys, be careful out there. Know that we care about you. All right. Special shout out to the NYPD Highway Patrol Motorcycle Unit, particularly Highway 1, because they're the ones that taught me how to ride this motorcycle the way that I do. But it didn't stop there. I continued to practice. OK, and I continue to practice. All right. It's very important that you guys know this is a perishable skill. OK. So with that being said, I want you to practice, practice, practice. Preload, keep it loaded. Practice, practice, practice. Until next time, guys.